Hey, have you been watching the pros hit those mouth-watering, powerful, super spinny, open stance forehands, and you want to transition and learn how to do it too? Well, you're in the right place at the right time because today I'm going to save you the number one mistake I see people make when they're trying to learn and master that open stance forehand. This is real world stuff. I have helped so many of my students through this. So if you're ready to cut the learning curve in half on this open stance forehand so you can start crushing forehands from any position on the court, let's get started. Hey guys, my name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching and I can't wait to get into this open stance forehand lesson with you. Before we get started, do me a favor, if you like this video, if you love tennis, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. Okay, so let's talk about that open stance forehand. Why are so many pros using an open stance forehand nowadays when they're hitting their forehand? Because the play is fast, if you haven't noticed. They're having to run back and forth. They're having to cover a lot of real estate. That's reason number one. And so even though that the traditional step in, right, racket back, step forward and hit, that is not outdated. You're gonna see the pros, whenever they have time, they're gonna still step into the ball. So don't think you have to pick one or the other. You have to be all open or all closed. That is not true. You want the open stance forehand to be part of your footwork. You wanna to add to what you already have. You don't have to take it away. I know a lot of coaches will kind of make you choose, like are you gonna step in every ball or are you gonna hit open stance? I want you to be able to do both and that's why we're making this video today. Now why the pros are hitting open stance forehands is because they're forced to get outside of the court lots of times. They're having to hit a lot of shots out in the alley. So when you're hitting that shot, you know, that extra, if you're hitting a shot here and you're taking this extra step, that's taking extra time and the pros cannot afford to have extra recovery time. That's just gonna mean a winner on the other side of the court. So they gotta be able to hit that shot open. So the pros gotta be able to hit that shot open stance and then be able to get back really quick. You see how fast I'm getting back to the middle with not much effort. Now, if I'm running out here, and I'm stepping, then stepping across, then moving. You see how much time that's already taking? The Pro Tour, that's a winner on the other side. But this is also going to help you get faster recovery to the ball, especially if you've lost a step or two, like I've lost a step or two, the open stance actually becomes more important. So don't think that you are too old to learn this as well, or just not at the level that the pros are, and this shot is not for you. Another reason why the pros are using open stance forehand is on really, really deep fastballs. And this is another reason why you need an open stance forehand and it's probably making, you're probably making some errors on fastballs because you're trying to step in. I want, I want to show you some, something very interesting here. As you see a ball coming deeper, what's going to happen to you if you don't have an open stance forehand? Okay, so as tennis players, we always want to be able to keep the ball out in front. We want early contact. So if I'm playing a point and I'm right here on the baseline and the ball bounces, let's say the ball is bouncing right here just inside the line. Watch this guys, now it's out in front, but if I go to step in, now you can see the ball has gone behind me and I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna be muscling the ball. If I stay open right here, just take the ball right off the bounce, now I can keep that ball out in front, I can have that early contact and I can keep playing tennis. So this is why, another big reason why you want to master this open stance forehand. So from here on out, I'm gonna start teaching you what the open stance forehand looks like, what the number one mistake is, and some drills you can do to start improving this open stance forehand so, so it feels comfortable and it doesn't feel awkward. Okay, so I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page here. So the forehand that most people are taught to learn right away is a closed forehand. The first tennis lesson I ever got in my life, which is a good tennis lesson, there's nothing wrong with this, it's racket back, step forward, and hit. So this is a closed stance forehand. Racket back, step forward, and hit. Closed stance forehand. The open stance forehand, you're going to start in a semi-open stance or a full open stance, meaning that your legs, your feet, lots of times are actually, both feet are facing towards your opponent. And because of that, 
you're going to have to get some power. You're going to have to use your leg. You're going to have to use the kinetic chain. So you're going to have to use your legs and you're going to have to really get good at understanding how to create power from your core. You have to do this also when you're stepping into a ball, the racket back, step forward and hit technique, but it's going to be a little bit different and this is where the pitfall happens where people make a big mistake. So I'm going to show you what's happening. But to hit an open stance forehand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set here and now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn, load up my trunk area and my shoulders to where now I'm looking over my shoulder so now I can unravel all this and still get power. If that doesn't happen, if I just stay completely open and let's just exaggerate this and say I bring my arm here and I leave the other arm here, it's going to be very hard to create any kind of power. I need to be able to load up right around here, starting right in your legs. You really feel a lot of stress in here in your trunk area. You turn the shoulders. You want to be able to see some of my back here, okay? The more I can show you my back, the more I can really release power out of that forehand and really hit a great shot without the step in. So again, if I put my hand out here and exaggerate and leave the other arm here when I drop the ball, this is, I'm not going to be able to really get a lot of power on this. There's just not enough body to use and you can see that's a really weak ball. Now I'm going to load everything up. You can really see the power load here and I feel like I can really snap out of this and release and hit a big forehand. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get here, snap out of this and release and hit a big forehand. Snap out, release, hit big forehands. Snap out, release, hit big forehands. Let's even do one down the line. And you can see we're able to generate a good amount of power with no step. How is that happening? Well, first of all, let me show you how that's not happening. So the big mistake, the big power and control leak I'm seeing on open stance forehands especially if you watch it on TV or maybe even watching this video, it looks like I'm taking a lot of my body here and I'm just swinging around and I'm getting this rotational power. And so this is what you're focused on. That's number one. And that's actually not 100% accurate. If I'm just coming here and then all my energy starts to come out this way too soon, I'm not only not going to hit the ball that hard, a lot of my balls are going to end up launching way wide. And this is what I see happen to a lot of my students. They're trying to hit the ball forward and they keep shanking the ball wide. And that's because the energy too soon, even though you're loading up here, you start to pull around your body too soon and it's like you're almost hitting a forehand that way. Okay? And, and, and I really start thinking, well, why is this happening? Because you're used to stepping towards your target. You're used to having your energy go towards your target. So now your step in a sense has turned this way. It's turned this way. So the first drill I want you to do is actually understand what's happening so you can feel this power and how you're losing power going forward when you step this way. So here's the first drill you're actually going to do and just do this drill. Trust me, this is going to work for you because you're going to be a lot of light bulbs going on. You're also going to feel how the energy of your body is being used. So what I want you to do first of all is do that traditional step in that you're used to. Rack it back, step forward and hit and you'll probably feel a good amount of power going into the ball. And you're used to taking your back hip and then stepping and pushing forward and having all the energy go to the next leg. So that's what you're used to doing and you're used to your energy going forward in your hip. Forward in your hip this way, but it's more of a this type move like we're doing a punch this way with a step. So if you're used to that and you're open, it's on, to exaggerate things, it's like you're coming here and you're stepping that way because a lot of people start hitting over there. So what I want you to actually do is just do that. Just come here, get set, actually get your toe facing that way and swing into the fence and feel all the power you feel going into the fence. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take one hit forward. I want you to take one hit 
step forward and hit, and then come over here, step forward and hit to the fence. All right? Just so you can understand why your ball is going over there so quickly and you don't feel any power because that's what's happening. You're essentially pulling off that way too soon in your open stance. Does that make sense? Now, the subtle change you have to make, and it's going to feel like a big change when you're starting this out, eventually the two shots are not going to feel that different. That's the cool thing. Once you get the open stance and the closed stance, your body energy almost feels the same. In the beginning, it's going to feel a, a world of difference. And so what I have to do before I can come around that way is instead of my hip coming all the way there, instead of the energy coming around this way, I need this hip to push forward. And what I want you to do is pretend that on your hip you've got like an arm and a boxing mitt, okay? On your hip you've got an arm and a boxing mitt and instead of punching somebody over here, which is essentially what most people do when they're making that mistake and they're pulling off, they're like with their hip they're punching someone there too soon, their hips going that way. I want you to imagine that through your hip you're punching somebody right in front of you. So you're actually like punching them with your hip instead of your arm. Imagine that. So it's got to go forward. Bring it forward out and then around. Okay, so we'll show you a couple different angles on this so you can really see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set and I'm going to really concentrate on the hip going forward and the hand going forward before I then come around. Okay, and also the more in the beginning, I know I just showed you where I'm like this and open, I also want your non-dominant hand engaged longer so you can really feel both hands coming out here first and then around and that way you can get some good energy forward. So here we go. So notice I'm going to be punching forward, punching forward, and then around. Come here, I'm going to punch forward with a hip and then around. Punch forward with a hip and then around. We're getting a lot of nice power in that. I'm going to show you from the side and then from the back and really understand how I'm focused on going this way and then that way, not just that way. That's a big mistake I see people doing. So here we go. Again, I'm going to focus on the hip power going forward and then over, forward and then over. And if I do that, I can get some nice pop on the ball, forward and then over. That one was even harder. Oh, that time, now that was interesting, that time I pulled out too soon. That's why I see my students do. I left the station too early with this hip. That's where people are making their mistake. Okay, so I got to feel engaged there. We'll show you from the back. Hopefully I get some nice power forehands to show you by focusing more on going forward before I come around. Here we go. First of all, this is what I see people doing as the mistake and, and even on my last forehand, I did this too early so I lost a lot of power and control on the ball is that the hip is shooting this way too soon, so you try and hit that open stance and you're missing a lot of wide balls. A lot of times it even actually comes off a lot weaker than that. I see lots of, lots of miss hits, lots of framers, lots of balls like that. That's actually what I see a lot of where uh, you know, it's got a lot of spin, but it kind of travels weakly into the net or wide. So now we got to really focus on pushing out with our hip first and then around. So now I'm going to focus on going out forward first, then I come over. So after I've extended my hand out all the way this way, see I can't really push it any further, then I start to turn the doorknob. Okay, so you can think about it, turn the doorknob, but lots of people they're turning the doorknob as they're hitting because they see all this, they think they're seeing all this wristy stuff from the pros. Nadal, who looks like he might be the wristiest player, you can see right here in this particular shot that he actually at contact, his wrist is actually pretty locked in there and engaged. Now he's holding the racket loose to do that. He's not holding the death grip, but it's in this position hitting. He's not snapping his wrist before he hits it. He's not snapping his wrist before he hits it. It's, it's in this locked position. Then he starts to turn that doorknob over just like all the top pros that you're watching today.
Here we go. I think I can engage even a little better with a forward hip momentum. Forward and then around. That's even better. And again, forward and then around. Now we're, now we're getting a lot more power. Forward and then around. So those last three, you can see there, I was able to hit deep through the court and get a big bounce off the fence. That lets me know that I was much more engaged with my hip on those last three and that's going to give you a bigger, more consistent forehand in the open stance. All right, so to recap that lesson, let's just summarize that lesson. First of all, why do you want to have that open stance? You want that open stance so when you have to run out there for a ball, you can hit open stance. When the ball is coming deep to you super fast, that open stance is a great play. Also, even when the ball is coming in at your body, rather than trying to figure out how to get away and then step in, you can just dance away and hit an open stance. So that's another reason we didn't cover in the video. So there's a big incentive to learn this. Now the number one mistake I see students make over and over again is most of their energy is going to travel that way too soon. All right, so the, the drill I want you to do is I actually want you to do a traditional step in and hit, swing forward, and then I want you to swing to the fence and realize that in essence that's kind of what you're doing. And then finally to correct this, I want you to take some tennis balls and I want you to focus on really pushing that hip forward, forward, and then around. If you can do that, you're going to be smoking open stance forehands and you have developed a new weapon. So if you like this video, please give it a big like. If you love tennis and you want to learn more tennis, make sure you subscribe and you ding the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. And right now, take a look. I've got some videos right over here or here. There's more videos you can watch. So keep up the learning and I'll see you on the next video.